Welcome to the last topic in the titration lecture. Um, this is about complex symmetric titration. Complex symmetric titration is based, as the name suggests, on the formation of complexes. And this formation of complexes is consisting of two parts, the central metal atoms and the ligands that are then complexing with the metals. And uh, with the complex symmetric titration, we are determining these metal atoms and the ligands are our titrants. And uh, it is important to note that the complex symmetric titration has usually very nice clear stoichiometry, but it depends on the coordination number of the metal as well as on the available coordination sites in this ligand. And this can make the formed um, complexes sometimes quite uh, kind of complicated. So, for example, a uh, silver cation uh, forms complexes with ammonia, but it is uh, a multi-state process in the sense that, uh, firstly, a, a one silver atom, one ammonia as a ligand complex is formed which can then further react to form a complex which contain, consists of two ammonias as ligand and a silver uh, cation in between. And uh, this makes um, sometimes the complex formation a bit complicated and therefore mostly uh, complex nometric titration, the um, ligand that is used as a titrant is a multi-coordination um, site ligand. A very often EDTA is used. Uh, so EDTA is a reagent, uh, a catalytic agent, that has six sites available for coordination bonds with the metals. Uh, so the structure of the metal EDTA complex or metal cation EDTA complex is shown on the right hand side below and we can see that the EDTA consists of four carboxylic acid groups, each one forming one coordination bond with the metal cation and also the two nitrogens in the molecule of EDTA both form one coordination bond with the metal. Therefore, all in all, six uh, coordination bonds can be formed between the metal cation and EDTA, and therefore EDTA reacts in a ratio of one to one with all metals. And this is very beneficial for a very straightforward stoichiometry, and usually EDTA is the uh, titrant uh, of selection for complex nometric uh, titrations. EDTA has also one other property that needs mentioning, and this is that uh, it can be uh, protonated, but it is forming the complex uh, in its deprotonated form, like in the structure on the right hand side, so where the carboxylic acid groups are deprotonated. And therefore, it is uh, important to note that the higher the pH, the stronger. Um, is the formation of the uh, of the complex. So the higher are the formation uh, coefficients of the metal EDTA complexes. Uh, it is important that the complex that is supposedly formed during titration would be a stable one. So the formation coefficient of the complex would be high. And here we are, are brought the formation coefficients for a few metal cations with EDTA. And first you can see that they are relatively high, but you also see that they are very, very different. The highest ones are about 17 orders of magnitude higher than the lowest ones. And this, of course, has implications in the titration. So some of them turn out to be too low to be actually practically applicable. Uh, and because the formation coefficients do depend on the form that EDTA is in, so EDTA forms complexes in its 
deprotonated form, the pH is very important in the complex formation titration. That means practically that buffering is always required when titration, uh, complex formation titration is being carried out. Let's maybe visually see what is the effect of the formation coefficient from an uh, example from Skuge et al. analytical chemistry book. Um, here is a titration curve for the complex formation for different metals with reaction of EDTA. Here on the y-axis we have the minus logarithm of the metal, metal concentration or the metal cation concentration and on the x-axis we have the concentration of the EDTA that is being added to the uh, titration uh, during the titration. And we can see here clearly that if the formation coefficient is higher, then the jump in the titration curve is much, much higher. And for some cases, the formation coefficient is so low that we actually do not end up seeing a very sharp difference in the free metal concentration in the solution. Uh, so just to clarify, this uh, concentration on the y-axis is not the total metal cation concentration, but the free metal cation concentration. This is the starting concentration uh, minus then the uh, concentration of the metal that has been a, a form, but which has formed the complex with the EDTA that has been added during titration. So obviously from here, some metals can be determined with EDTA uh, titration more easily than other metals. And for some metals, uh, there is either it's not suitable or we need to play around with the uh, pH. Uh, this example now was on a pH of 6. Uh, how to determine the endpoint in the complex determin determination? There are two possibilities. Again, a potentiometric endpoint determination. This is when we can, for example, monitor the concentration of the free metal directly in the solution with, uh, for example, ion selective electrodes. So we can potentiometrically determine how much free metal is uh, in the solution, has, as has been indicated here on this uh, graph. And the other option is to use indicators, and indicators are also complex forming ligands uh, that form complexes with the same metal as a titrant does but their forma complex formation coefficients have to be smaller than the ones for the metal and the titrant. So the idea is that um, indicator does not compete with the titrant uh, for forming the complex, but rather when, uh, uh, when the, the titrant is being added to the sample, then indicator frees up uh, some metal which it has been coordinated with the indicator before and if uh, the if the titan has reacted with all of the uh, metal ions in the solution then there are no more metal ions left for the indicator and the indicator will change color because the uh, indicator metal complex uh, is of a different co color than just a free indicator. So complex formation titration was the last topic that we viewed here in this titration lecture. Uh, thank you for your attention. And that was a brief overview of, of these four topics.